Okay, ladies and gents, welcome back to part seven of the homemade CNC needle cutter machine. Um, in the last video, I showed you how we put the CNC um, shield onto the UNO board and um, how it was sort of connected and bolted up to the, the side plate of the machine. Um, in this video, I'll just show you briefly how it's wired up. Um, if you look here where my pen is pointing, that is the uh, X driver, that is the Y driver. The black and white uh, and red extension is um, is the Z axis, the servo on the on the cutter head. Um, the red and black power wires here are for the power for the the little um, motor. You've got your power in from your laptop transformer and the data cable coming in from the laptop itself. Um, I fed it all through this neat cable tidy stuff, plastic stuff. Those are the back of the NEMA 17 stepper motors. Um, the Y axis being the bottom motor, the X axis being the top. If I sort of pan out a little bit, you can see that. You can see the X rail here, and this is the power wire supplying that. There's the, the motor, all wired in to the servo tester, which is like the variable speed control. And if you look on the back, you can see the whoops, the ESC, the servo, and obviously the back of the servo tester there. So that's the, the basic setup. If that's just scan round and give you a rough idea. So what I've done, this is obviously on the dining room table while my wife is away. I've just put a sheet of paper there so we can see what we're doing. Uh, what we're going to do is just do a dummy dry run if you like and um, if I take you over to the PC you can see what we've got on. Now this is the GRB controller. Yeah, it's running on COM port 3 and you can see all the parameters that I've set into that. Now what I've done, if you're familiar with the flight test uh, foamy models I've uh, chopped a bit out of one of their drawings and some of you will recognise this as being the power pod. It's, it, to be honest, it's not a brilliant drawing. I've made a few mistakes on it myself. Uh, and that is on the bottom tabs here, you can see that we're going to actually chop them off. But that's just, that's just me and how I've drawn it up. I'm not quite used to the programme just yet. But you can, you know, you get the idea. You can see what it's all about. It's already connected. The machine status is at zero, zero. So all we have to do is press the begin button. So come up with your old mouse. Oops. Click begin. If we go back to the machine, we should have some action. Obviously, I'm not going to run it with the motor because I don't want to cut into Mrs. Kirkham's dining room table but you can see that we're now moving. You'll notice that it sort of moves and then stops. And that is down to the power of my uh, laptop. The old laptop's about 15 years old, so it struggles for memory, struggles for speed. So the data transfer between the laptop and the Uno board is uh, a bit limited to say, the, to say the least. But it proves the point that the machine is alive and it's working as it's moving backwards and forwards. Nice and quiet as well, which I'm quite impressed about. We can sort of come in a little bit. You'll see it moving. So it's running sweet as a nut, to be fair. Uh, the good thing with the GRB controller is it gives you a status bar progress bar there, file progress, 
32%, 33%. So it gives you a good indication of where you are in the program. The queued commands there is eight. What that actually means is it's reading eight lines in front of where it is in the program. So it's uh, it's got a like um, a learn ahead sort of function. So if you have got a faster PC, then uh, it, it would run continuously, no problem at all. You can see the G code that's been generated here. Oops, come on, focus. See all the G codes, and you can see it's flicking up the screen as as the machine is reading it because we are sort of drip feeding it from the laptop to the machine. If you look on the right hand side, it does give you a pictorial of what we're doing. That red spot is where the cutter is, the actual needle cutter. And you, you'll see that moving round the shape as it's machining it. So it gives you a fair old, old indication of where you are. This corner here being 00, zero x0, zero, y0, zero, like you see the two zeros. So that's where the machine is zeroed out on, which would be the corner of your sheet of foam. Yeah, see so it's just going round that radius now. We can start the cutter up because it is well above uh, Mrs Kirkham's dining room table so I'll just start it up so you can see just turn it on so there we are it whizzing round and there's the needle coming out at the front you just just sort of see that Take the camera can pick it up so that's basically it. I think I can call this a success. There's a few things that I want to do. Just turn that off. Bring the, the cutter up to the top and it's finished the job. And it's on its way back to zero, zero, which, you know, will be over here. It's just where I've set the zeros. That's it, job done. So we look on the screen. That part has took 3 minutes 33 seconds, which um, I know it's pretty slow as far as CNC's go, but it's a nice little part just to see what's happening, and three and a half minutes, I think you'd be hard pushed, hard, hard pushed, hard uh, pass to actually mark that out and cut it out by hand, so um, I'm pretty pleased with that. So I hope you've enjoyed part seven. Uh, part eight. We'll actually have a look at cutting some foam, hopefully. Um, and I can run you through the software that we use to draw it up and uh, to convert it into G-code and what have you. So um, if you've enjoyed it, uh, please put a thumbs up. Uh, leave a few comments if you like, if there's anything that you need to know. And uh, I'll get back to you as soon as we can. So that's it, boys. Stay safe and I'll see you soon.